Coming up in the morning edition, the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services has a new commissioner, two brothers arraigned for murder, and let's see what's happening down in Cat Island. We continue to acknowledge Holy Week this morning. Happy Tuesday to all of you. I'm LaDawn Davis, and this is the Morning Edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean is standing by with the weather report to tell us if April showers are in the forecast. Good morning, Basil. Good morning, LaDawn. Before we get to those April showers, we're going to get started with our tower cam, and it's showing a beautiful shot overlooking the east. A few clouds, skies are clearing as the sun slowly begins to rise in the east. As we go to our satellite picture, we have that frontal boundary now in the central Bahamas. That will leave behind some clearing, so do not look for those April showers in the northwest Bahamas. If you want them, you will have to find yourself somewhere in the central Bahamas today where that frontal boundary is. Outside of our studios, we have uh, just a few clouds temperature 74 degrees, relative humidity 83%, northeast winds at 8 miles per hour, the barometric pressure 1,017.7 millibars, 30.08 inches, and the pressure is rising. Temperatures around the islands this morning, 70 degrees in Marsh Harbor, Green, Tolkien, and Freeport at 69 degrees. The Berry Islands, 74, 75 in Alistair, Bimini, in Harbor Island, 75, Rock, Sandy, Lutra, Alistair, Cat Island, 76, Daniel Key, Kemp Space on Andros, Fresh Creek, and Central Andros, all at 77 degrees. San Salvador and Rum Key, 76 degrees in Ragged Island, Clarenstown, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, and Ackland, 77, Manchitani, Niagara, 77. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 78 degrees. Your body forecast for today in the northwest Bahamas, northeast winds 12 to 18 knots, the so wave highs 3 to 6 feet over the ocean, low tide at 11 12 this morning, high tide 521 in the afternoon. For the central and southeastern islands, easterly flow 10 to 15 knots, so wave highs 2 to 4 feet. That's going to do it for your first look at weather in the morning edition. Stay tuned to your forecast for today and tonight. It's still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. Jim Anita Swain is standing by with a traffic drone and the Bahamas First Traffic Report. The Traffic Report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance. Today, tomorrow. Good morning, LaDon, and good morning, Bahamas. As you can see from our drone shot, we're in the area of Prince Charles and Soldier Road, more so on the side of Village Road. Um, what you can see behind us from the traffic light is that all of the lights have uh, turning signal indicators, except for if you want to go right onto Prince Charles Drive. I know most motorists making their way out tend to inch out um, when they get the chance, even though there is a green light, but there is no turning indicator. For much of the morning, traffic has been a great um, flow. This is, of course, the Easter break, so most persons don't have to make that mad dash to do the school drop-off before heading to work. So it seems to be an easy commute for the morning. But to find out if there are any challenges or bottlenecks that we need to know about is, of course, Corporal DeCorey Barr of the Police Traffic Division. Good morning, Corporal Barr. Uh, good morning, Jimenita. Good morning, Bahamas. Now, are there any accidents or anything that we need to know about or motorists need to know about as they make their morning commute? No, at this time, we have uh, no accidents outstanding, um, no traffic congestions, uh, nothing to impede or instruct the obstruct the flow of traffic um, so like you said our morning commuters should have a an easy flow this morning now we're here um, as I mentioned earlier uh, at the Prince Charles and Soldier Road traffic light and one of the issues that we note is just the fact that there is no signal to go right if you're going on to Prince Charles Drive all of the in the other turning signals are in place it may have just been an omission but is that a concern for you I know this area does have uh, accidents from time to time but maybe what what, what what do you think happened there well I can't speak to uh, what what have transpired or what happened why the turning like there's no turning indicator however there is a green light and there's no signage uh, directing you or instructing you not to turn east onto Robinson Road from the Prince Charles Drive I'm also if we make note of the street markings on the road it's clearly marked where there's a turning lane for the persons who want to travel east from the southbound on soldier road now in the i know this is we're approaching the holiday weekend good friday in a couple of days and obviously we had a few accidents 
from the weekend it leading into the week any concerns particularly anything that you want to say to motorists just to be mindful of to keep in mind as we get closer to the holiday weekend that i'm sure that everybody's looking forward to yes um going into the holiday weekend even, even though it's a holy holiday weekend um we tend to find that we still have a lot of persons are partying um with that we want to ask persons to party and drink responsibly uh, if you have to drive after consuming alcohol or if you're driving and you feel like you need to consume alcohol you should have always have a designated driver um, if not again be responsible about it be mindful and considerate of other road users uh, do the things that we've been asking you all year to continue to do and you should have no issues all right. Well, thank you so much. That is, of course, Corporal Decore Bar of the Police Traffic Division. Again, a beautiful day shaping up. Not too much traffic on the streets. So be safe. Back to you in Studio Ladon. Thanks a lot, Terminita. Now on to our top story this morning. The Bahamas Department of Correctional Services now has a new corrections commissioner at its helm. After a nearly 40-year veteran at the department, Charles Murphy officially took on that post. An official handover ceremony was held at the department on Monday. Murphy, who assumes the post after former commissioner Patrick Wright, says a new day has come at the Fox Hill facility. Murphy, who began his career at the former Her Majesty's Prison in 1980, says he will not tolerate corruption during his tenure and will work to improve outcomes for those that are incarcerated. I pledge that I will do my best to fulfill the mandate of the organization, which is to rehabilitate and to successfully reintegrate into society those persons who are entrusted in our care. Further, I will seek to foster a cordial, cohesive, and a professional environment which will be undergirded by discipline, the rule of law, and fairness. The Minister of National Security, the Honorable Marvin James, was also at the handover that he says signals another milestone for the department. He had this advice for Murphy. Note that the charge of your leadership should not derail the department's forward movement. I expect that as the new commissioner, your leadership should steady the course, energize the work team, and expertly steer the ship as BDOX moves steadily forward in its quest to become a more correctional focused institution. Commissioner Murphy, I encourage you and your team to keep your heads up, selfish pride down, to gird yourselves and hit the ground running. Be the leader that exemplifies and embrace the change, being strong, flexible, and inclusive. Two brothers arraigned in the South Street Magistrate's Court Monday for murder. The Haitian Nationals 25-year-old Dwayne Ladimus in the blue shirt and 21-year-old Anton Ludimus are accused of killing Elroy Burroughs back on March 19th. The duo was not called to enter a plea. Bail was denied and they were remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. They returned to court on May 16th for a service of voluntary Bill of Indictment papers. After much complaints going into the end of 2018 about garbage collection, officials at the Department of Environmental Health say that twice weekly collections since January have been going well and decreased consumer complaints. Environmental Health Director Melanie McKenzie telling ZNS News that for the most part, consumers are pleased. However, there are still collection challenges. Now, most of our problems are coming from the fact that we no longer collect any residences that are over triplex. So we will collect a triplex, a duplex, a single family residence. And the problems arise when we see four meters. Obviously, if you see four meters, you're thinking it's a fourplex, but sometimes it's not. So you would call it in, we go and investigate it, we make sure that you're not just telling us a fib, and then we instruct the contractor to go ahead and collect. Um, so we have varying times. Now what we're working on right now is trying to shorten that time frame for collection so that while we're collecting twice, we're also collecting more efficiently in a shorter period of time so that the audience knows, okay, Monday my truck is normally here between 4 and 11. So if you're one of those persons who tend to keep your garbage inside, you know when to bring it out. 
And the garbage tale continues, this time over in Cat Island. Here's Charles Fisher. Which was once a chaotic site with indiscriminate dumping from the site to the road, Deputy Chief Councillor Herman Gilbert and the local government has brought some type of order. We have able to fence off part of the dump site, whereas persons no longer um, are able to dump um, front. They have to come um, good ways back. Um, but still there's uh, much more work to be done at this site. Um, we, ha we want to be able to have this site um, organized whereas you, um, you know where to dump and you know based on the, the item that you bring in um, where, where goes where. One of the reasons for the illegal dumping may be to the fact that the site is not manned. They are free to come and go and there's no structure so they just come and dump anything anywhere and, and, and leave it in the chaotic state that it is. So we are pleading to the public to be mindful um, to the environment, be cautious to where you dump and how um, you dump your household items and any other um, um, waste that you, that you want to dispose of. Environmentally, toxins from the site as well as garbage was killing off the wildlife in the adjacent lake. We had a lot of um, birds um, that used to um, come here, um, even ducks, everything else. It was killing it off. Um, I'm seeing um, during the season um, a few birds that have came back um, since we have pushed off and, and start, start to do some work here. Other measures are being put in place to avoid the indiscriminate dumping. Do we have two contractors now instead of one that picks up garbage on the island? Also, um, we have put days that when um, that we let the public know when garbage collection will be will be picked up um, within your community. So um, that is going uh, extremely well um, right now. For the ZNS News Network, I'm Charles Fisher. Great story there, Fisher. And coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at BTVI's welding program. That and more when the morning edition comes right back. Fidelity has the tools you need to make getting out of debt simple. Our debt consolidation loans will help you reduce your monthly payments with a built-in savings plan that earns 5% interest. Fidelity even gives you a financial coach to help you stay on track. Even our credit cards earn reward points that can be used for free travel, hotel stays, movies, gas, John Boat, car rentals, and shopping. No need to fall victim to sweet talk. Tell those other banks to simply walk the talk. Call Fidelity today and get the help you really need with a real debt consolidation loan. Fidelity, we're good for you. The machinery of the government is always working to make the country better for present and future generations. But what does that machinery look like and how does it really work? Find the answers to these questions and more as you hear directly from this administration's policymakers. Tune in to A Closer Look with Anthony Newbold, Mondays at 8 p.m. and Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on the ZNS Television Network. Welcome back to the Morning Edition. This Holy Week, a number of heads of Christian churches will gather for a four-day interdenominational, rather, preacher's conference at New Covenant Baptist Church beginning on Wednesday. Spearheaded by Bishop Simeon Hall, the religious leaders of the Baptist, Anglican, Adventist Church of God of Prophecy, and Brethren Churches will discuss the gift of preaching. We have nine of the top preachers in the country who will be um, um, giving lectures and uh, 6.30 to 7.30, 7.15 every day, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then uh, 7.30 is the main service. The point of this ecumenical, interdenominational uh, thrust is to get the body of Christ together as best we can. It is a beginning, and we're looking forward to it we, we, as I said, we are going to be for four days talking about the church and the preaching craft. Welding may be a male-dominated field, but it seems that more females are not expressing interest in that trade. A number of high school students from institutions across the capital are actively engaged in the daily sessions at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute. We caught up with the instructor and several students to hear their experiences. 
Professional welder and instructor Maverick Moxie has been teaching welding at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institution for decades, and he says passing on the knowledge of the trade to young Bahamians has been a lifelong commitment. Some 15 students, predominantly male from six high schools across the capital, attend the courses daily. We caught up with Moxie during a session on the school's campus to get an inside look at the program. There's six different subjects. We teach intro classes called Fundamentals. We teach oxy-settling, how to use the torch properly. We teach fa uh, fabrication, how to build small items. We teach pipe, and we teach blueprint reading for welders. And the other one we have is called positional, as well as stuff outside of being flat. The biggest problem we have here at BTVI is that students have a tendency to start, then stop. Stop in that they get jobs before they have time to finish. The progress we have running now, we have the regular students from BTVI, the BOB program, BO on Boss. And a few of the students we spoke to shared their experiences in the program. We make gassings, as you can see from over there, and etc. Um, we make welding beams. What I like is um, meet new people and I get to show them my skills and their skills here. And what I want to be, I want to be an electrician. And this helped me out in being an electrician. Because if somebody wants a gate run, they need a box, I get relegated around they need a box for them. And in I taking up AC2 this term, so that could help me put a gate around the darkless outside. So I just left this class. But while it's a potential career for some of the students, Moxie says there are others who simply don't stick with it. Double quicker than the females. Why do you think that is? Money. They get a job, they make money, that's it. The females have a tendency to stay longer because the guy's giving up the money. But it's more like a male-dominant field. Why do you think the women are so interested in it? Because they want something other to do than what they normally do. They're tired of cosmetology, they're tired of sewing, they're tired of these other things. So that's it. That's what they're doing now. And while his time in the field is coming to an end, Moxie remains optimistic that a few of the students would continue the legacy by teaching the trade to others. So Fisher, what's coming up in sports? Did you pick up a trade at BTVI? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, wasted. You should have picked up the trade because I know you, you're good at Because I know how to sew, I can cook, I can do all these other things. No, texan, texan, I'm not a texer, B, B, but go ahead. What's coming That's up in sports? Coming up in sports with our ladies' Fed Cup team. They are over there in Peru, and they'll know who they'll face coming up later on today. That and more ahead in sports. <laughs> As private aviators continue to fly into the Bahamas, a number of American pilots who love the destination are looking to signal more pilots to explore. Over the past few years, the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and Aviation officials have partnered with a number of fly ambassadors to educate eager pilots about how easy it is to fly here. Well, there's so many great things about the Bahamas, but I impress upon them that the Bahamas' greatest natural resource is not the sand, not the water, it's the people and that they're going to have a fantastic time. And uh, the big question I get is, well, what do I do over there and where should I go? And I said, well, where you go sort of dictates what you want to do. So if you want to go bone fishing, we, we direct people to, to places that are good for bone fishing, snorkeling, diving. You know, the, the Bahamas has so much to do. There's nightlife if people are looking for nightlife. So the neat thing about the Bahamas is it's close to the United States. It is a foreign country, uh, so it's an exotic location. And it has such a wide variety from Vegas style casinos down to fish camps on Andrews. So. Popular YouTube pilot and fly ambassador Steve O says he feels honored to promote the islands of the Bahamas. It was a real privilege when the Bahamas came to me and said, you know, Lord, we want to make you a flying ambassador. I never thought that would be possible in my lifetime. I've been flying in the Bahamas most of my whole career. I love flying out there. I love the culture. I love the people. And just to be able to showcase the beauty of the islands and how easy it is to fly around is what I really enjoy. Many of the fly ambassadors participated in the recent Sun and Fun aviation show in Lakeland, Florida. As a climax to the event, some 40 pilots flew out to the Bahamas and visited Grand Bahama, Cat Island, and Treasure Key, Abaco. I'm Candia Smith, and this is Tourism Today.
Good morning once again. Our ladies Fed Cup tennis team, they are all settled in Peru. The tie will get underway on Wednesday. Player captain Kerry Cartwright speaking to ZNS Sports Monday after their second practice. We just got here on Saturday and we've had two good days of training so far. Um, looking forward to playing. We have the captains meeting on Tuesday to find out who we play and the draw and all the rules and format of how everything's going to be going down. We have a good group of girls right now. Uh, we have Danielle Thompson, former collegiate player, um, and she played with me last year in Ecuador and we made finals and that was really good. Um, and then we have Sydney Clark, uh, she's up, uh, up and coming junior, very, very solid player also. And then we also have Sierra who is a uh, collegiate athlete right now playing. So just looking forward to a good week of tennis. Former b 3 boss Mike Sands launching his campaign to become the president of the North American, Central American and Caribbean Athletics Association. That's NACA. It's a big task with over 31 countries represented. I feel very confident. Um, there's a lot of things that you want to accomplish for the region. The region, which is NACAC, our, our region, is one of the stronger regions. Um, but I feel that we have to look at rebranding it in such a way. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening. I mean, there's a lot of issues that are taking place with respect to competition. Uh, you know there's a lot of competition in Europe. We want to look at making sure that sufficient competition um, is happening in our region. When you look at the product that we have, the region includes Canada, North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. Also, the Bahamas Basketball Federation elections all done with. And Mario new Boleg, he's the new president. Lots of work to be done, especially getting all the islands to bounce on one accord. The first thing we're going to do is meet and try to um, appoint committees. Uh, we want to appoint directors uh, for development of the game for men and ladies throughout the North, Central, and Southern Bahamas, uh, and have those uh, directors who will be responsible, having assistant directors and committees that will allow us to have a, a, a longer arm reach throughout the land breadth of the Bahamas, because the majority of executives are presently living in New Providence. And in order for us to be successful, we must have committees that will help us uh, achieve the goals we want to do if we want to take basketball to the next level. And the Bahamas Bowling Federation Nationals all completed with us well on the weekend with David Slaughter and Driscoll Roll repeating as men and ladies champions. There were a few surprises during the two-week tournament and that brought joy to the heart of President Tyrone Knowles. We had some surprises, uh, one of which is that three of the top five finishers from last year didn't qualify for this year. We had some new bowlers that really, really blasted the lanes this year and, and proved that they're able to rise to the occasion when it counted. And so we had a very, very um, competitive um, tournament. Um, final night came down to, was a nail biter straight to the end. Um, bowlers number five through number eight, which just a matter of one or two pins difference. And so it was a really, really tight uh, tournament. But I overall, um, I love the participation of the, of the bowlers. Uh, we've seen a lot of improvement in consistencies with bowlers and their ability to navigate the lanes and to make adjustments. And so this tournament this year has really, really been great. Sounds great. And that's going to put a wrap on Sports Tuesday. Thanks for watching. They come from around the Caribbean to test their athletic skills and see who will carry home gold. Don't miss the excitement of Carifta 2019, April 20th through 22nd from the Cayman Islands. Make sure your business gets in on the excitement with a ZNS advertising package tailored just for you. Call us at 502-3800 or 3801 and get in on the region's biggest track and field event. Explore the world of agriculture with us. Join me, your host, Carla Palmer, for continued adventures in agriculture and the marine environment as we head into Season 2 of the program, Agriculture Now. That's Agriculture Now, moving to a new date and time, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m., right here on the ZNS Television Network.
Marine Lighthouse on San Salvador to let you know that marine protected areas make dollars and cents. A well-designed and managed network of protected areas can generate income for nearby communities. From MPA managers to lodges to eco tours, there is money to be made. Healthy marine ecosystems help to protect our islands from climate change and other impacts that we cannot control. Healthy coral reefs help to break down big waves and mangroves absorb storm surge and help to protect our coastline. Older and larger fish tend to carry more and healthier eggs than younger fish. Fish replenishment areas will allow fish to grow bigger and ensure that we have more fish now and in the future. In our replenishment area, fish are free to grow and reproduce. As their populations increase, more fish will spill over into other areas where fishermen can increase their catch and their income. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island and you should too. And you should too. And you should too. And you should too. See, See the, the future, future with Bahamas, Bahamas Protected. protected. In our final look at weather, we have this weak fall boundary across the central Bahamas, and that will produce one or two April showers around Cat Island and Exuma today and slowly sink towards the south. And these clearing skies in the northwest Bahamas today, forecast calls for a mix of cloud and sunshine. High temperature today getting up to 83 degrees, and tonight we're looking at partly cloudy and mild conditions with a low temperature of 70 degrees. Your extended weather forecast heading into the weekend, uh, mid-80s uh, throughout, and then over the weekend we have yet another fall system will come in here so we're not quite done with those fronts and that will see temperatures drop into the 60s on Saturday and hopefully on Sunday we'll get another upper 60s for you as well but some showers developing on Saturday so take that into your planning for the weekend. Ladon? Thanks a lot Basil and that's it for us on the second day of Holy Week. Join us tomorrow at 7 a.m. for more Morning Edition. Once again I'm Ladon Davis. Have a great day everyone. <laughs>